Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. This is another Tech Talk brought to you by Frontier Precision. My name is Nathan Stevenson. I'll be giving this quick presentation. Uh, just a brief background about myself. I have a master's degree in environmental science where I used laser scanners to derive high definition digital terrain models where um, low definition data existed in the past. So today we're going to be talking about the GeoSlam Zeb Revo, the 3D Go Anywhere mobile mapping technology that gives you the capabilities to collect LiDAR data on the move with a handheld scanner. Um, just a quick uh, introduction to Frontier Precision for people that don't know. Frontier Precision um, has been a geospatial solutions provider for 28 years now. We support everything from survey to mapping and GIS, all the way over to UAV sales and services, uh, and obviously laser scanners, both mobile and terrestrial, and mobile imaging. This graphic here shows uh, Frontier Precision sales markets here. We cover a number of states. We have seven offices, um, and we are headquartered in Bismarck, North Dakota. So today we're going to be talking about GeoSlam, the 3D mobile mapping technology. Here you can see the sensor here. Uh, it's a rotating sensor head that you can hold in your hand and walk around and collect LiDAR data. There's also now the real-time capabilities, which can send uh, the point information that you're collecting back to a tablet or phone. You can see that on the left here. So GeoSlam is a joint venture between CSI Row and 3D laser mapping. CSI Row is the Australian national company that developed Wi-Fi, and 3D laser mapping is a company that has been in the LiDAR and laser industry for a number of years now. So they came together and created this uh, pretty interesting solution. So basically, GeoSlam, the SLAM stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. So this is simultaneously collecting your laser data measurements. Um, GeoSlam collects about 43,000 per second. And it integrates that with this IMU positional data, puts these two together, uses feature recognition um, built into their software. So their patented SLAM technology algorithms takes that data that you're collecting on the move, registers them together into a coherent registered LAS point cloud, which then you can um, <clears throat> either process on your computer in GeoSlam desktop, or if you have the real-time capabilities, you can process as you're collecting that data. And by the time you're done scanning, the software is done registering and you have your LAS data set. So to begin with, we'll go with the non-real-time, just the Zeb Revo. So you see it here. It comes with this data logger, which is this black box. Uh, this stores your, your, your data that you're collecting and also is your battery. So it collects about 43,000 points a second, like I said. And we're seeing something like a 1 to 2 centimeter accuracy. So we've measured this in the field a bunch of times where we have taken a tape measure or a different manual measurement technique where we've measured the heights of doors or the width of a room. And we really do come in at that one to two centimeter accuracy. Now indoor range is 30 meters. The type of laser that they use outdoors is degraded slightly by light. So it's about 15 meters outdoors. Um, as, as the industry is calling for it, most laser scanners are now class one iSafe. Um, it's not going to hurt you if you look into it. And the Zeb Revo non-real-time is IP64 rated, splash and dust proof. Um, it also comes with this backpack that you can put your data logger in so you can switch hands holding the Zeb Revo. Now the real-time solution is the exact same scanning hardware that you hold, but that data logger that we showed in the previous slide is slightly different. So everything else is exactly the same, except that data logger now has an internal processor that starts processing that SLAM algorithm right away as you're collecting the data. Now, because there's an internal processor, there's also some fans that need to run in there and cool down the system. So instead of being IP64 rated, it's now IP52, no longer splash and dust proof. So that's something just to be aware of. So here's just a... Um, quick overview of the software. 
So previously it was called the GeoSlam Desktop. Um, now we're calling it the GeoSlam Hub software. So this is where you'll process and merge your scan files. You'll also create your deliverables, your LAS or your PTS file uh, that you could then bring over into a third party software. Within Hub is now GeoSlam Draw. So you can es export your point clouds, but you also can produce uh, 2D drawings. Uh, you can do things like <clears throat> building measurements, widths of rooms, things like that. You can auto vectorize these to help you give a semi-autonomous 2D floor plan of the room that you just scanned. And you can also align and georeference your data. This is slightly different from the GeoSlam desktop software. It gives you some added capabilities. And obviously, GeoSlam, the data that it produces, works with a number of third-party software that you see here, and much more than this just is on the side. So just a couple is Recap and Revit, obviously, PointCab, 3D Reshaper. Um, it works with a number of different third-party software. So anything that can take an LAS point cloud uh, can take the data from the GeoSlam, and you can do your further analysis from there. So what type of industries is GeoSlam good for? Well, industries that already require point data, very precise and accurate point data, this is going to give it to you much quicker. So things like surveying, underground engineering, even forestry, and this is really built for mining applications and indoor use. Things like facility management, building management, and BIM. So as you can see here, uh, the BIM industry is really big because you can walk up and down stairs, you can collect data on multiple floors without multiple setups. Um, <clears throat> you can go inside, you can go outside, you can get these 2D floor plans, and you can, you can submit this data to your BIM or construction networks. So this is really good for this type of data collection. As I mentioned, forestry, you have to remember outside range is about 15 meters. So you can collect data about uh, diameter breast height of trees uh, and different forest metrics like that uh, with this system. And then this works really, really well for mining operations uh, that might take a lot of setups from a terrestrial or static laser scanner. Um, where, the, where this system, you can just walk through your space, you're dynamically scanning as you're walking, where you don't have to worry about that overlap between setups. And then obviously for things like stockpiles. Um, you can walk around a stockpile instead of having, having to set up on all different sides. If it's safe, you can walk over a stockpile and you can collect all that data and get your volume measurements from there. <clears throat> And another big industry that this is kind of moving into is forensic mapping. So things like crash scenes like you can see here. Um, the police and highway patrol are under a lot of pressure to open up highways after an accident. Um, and this system, you could capture the data that you need, recreate the scene, and open that up much more quickly than you could with um, some more manual techniques. All right, so I wanted to show a little bit of real data here. Um, this is a picture of going into a, a stockpile quarry. Um, this is what I'm going to show. Um, this is a industrial building that's been gutted. And this was a good showcase between this handheld GeoSlam and a more traditional static scanner, the Trimble TX8 high definition scanner, which puts out something like a million points a second. Now remember, the GeoSlam puts out 43,000 or so measurements per second. So one question I get a lot about the GeoSlam <clears throat> is 43,000 measurements per second enough data to model from? And the answer to that is yes. So here is the GeoSlam data of one of these supporting columns that you see here in the picture. And here is that same supporting column with the high definition TX8 data. You can see there's a little bit difference in density of points, but generally looks the same. So I wanted to model these two supporting beams and see what the dimensions came for each of the different systems here. So here's the GeoSlam and here's the TX8. 
And if we just take a quick look at the dimensions here, the width, we have 275 millimeters for the GeoSlam, 271 millimeters for the TX-8. So we're four millimeters difference in the width. We're five millimeters difference in the depth. And we are eight millimeters difference in the height. So all of these measurements are under one centimeter when comparing the GeoSlam handheld mobile laser scanner and the TX-8 high definition static laser scanner which is something I thought was really interesting. So same thing here. This is a, a model of a pipe that I created using Easy Pipe. Again, on the left, we have the GeoSlam data. On the right, we have a TX-8 data. And when you model these pipes, you can see that we're, the diameter that we're getting between systems is exactly the same. And um, we collected this data much more quickly with the GeoSlam. Uh, if you go back to that beginning picture of this industrial building, this is quite a large building. It's about the size of a city block. And it took us about two and a half hours to collect the data with the TX-8. And with the GeoSlam, by dynamically walking through the space and collecting that point measurement data, we did it in about 20 minutes and had maybe about 20 minutes of further registration time on the computer. So in roughly 40 minutes, we collected the exact same amount of data. We covered the same area as it took two and a half hours with a more traditional static laser scanner. Um, and again here, this is just showing point to point. So on the left here, we have our GeoSlam data. And we're just measuring point to point the width of this building. Same here, this is with the TX-8 data. So you can see we're coming up very, very close. This is a difference of about just over two centimeters in difference between the GeoSlam and the TX-8, and that's across a 30 meter wide swath. And then we were mentioning, mentioning forestry data before. So this is a trail that we walked along with the GeoSlam. You can see we're collecting not only the trail, not only the topography, right, but we're collecting information about the trees, their width. We're also collecting information about the height and the, the amount of biomass in the area, as well as their leaves, just by walking through this space. Here's just another um, metric of the same thing. All right, so I pulled uh, about some of the questions that might come up about this handheld GeoSlam system. And I'm just going to answer a couple of the top questions. So one of the top questions is, what's the significance of having to return to this point of your start? So the GeoSlam system, the way it works is, you have two options. You can either start in one location and stop in a different location, or you can start in the same location that you finish in. So basically you're closing your loop. If you're familiar with survey workflows, this is gonna give you some added accuracy and help to reduce your error across the project. So you're doing the same thing with the GeoSlam. You're reducing your area, your error, excuse me, across the project by closing that loop. Another big question is, <clears throat> can this system be used to capture linear data such as sidewalks? And the answer to that is yes. The way the GeoSlam and the SLAM algorithm technology works, it's basically looking for unique identifiable features in your space that it can use to register. So if you have a linear feature like a sidewalk or a, a hallway, for example, and there's no unique features, then the system might have a little bit of trouble registering that together. And in that case, you could set cones or maybe a box if it's a hallway, and this will help to help register that data together. <clears throat> Another question is, how is this data transmitted or stored? Well, while you're collecting this data, while you're walking around with the handheld scanner, you're also connected to that black box or your data logger. This has a 55 gigabyte hard drive within it, and this is where all of that data is stored locally. Um, so to get your data off, you would basically uh, hook up to this with a USB drive or a hard drive, and you can pull off the data files as needed. 
Um, another question that comes up a lot, <clears throat> is there any dead areas to be aware of or areas that are blocked out with this scanner? So as you're walking with the GeoSlam, it's seeing 360 degrees in front of you. So if you can imagine you're in a hallway, it's seeing each of the walls, the ceiling, and the floor in front of you. Now, in terms of the different access, it sees 270 degrees, blocking out the 90 degrees directly behind the laser scanner. This would be where the operator is walking so that you're not continuously in your own scans. So this is a, a unique way that the GeoSlam technology blocks out that 90 degrees. And then when you start again at your, your um, <clears throat> scan location, um, where you start from to begin with, this is how you would fill in that 90 degrees, right? So you walk through your space, you're collecting data, and then you walk back through it to close your loop. This is how you're going to collect the best data. All right, some other questions is, what would a stockpile volume workflow look like? So I showed that picture of a stockpile. Basically, all you need to do to collect stockpile information, like volume, would be to walk around that stockpile, and if it's safe, walk over the stockpile. Uh, this is going to give you all the data you need to measure things like height or volume. <clears throat> All right, another question that comes up quite often is how does the system geo-reference its data since it does not have a GPS attached to it? So there's a number of ways you can geo-reference point cloud data in general. The GeoSlam uses a unique workflow where if you have ground control points in the field, you can take this system as you're dynamically walking through that space. You'll stop, set the GeoSlam unit on top of your ground control point for a couple of seconds. This will register that the IMU is no longer moving, and it'll say this is an important point, and then later on the back end processing, you can assign a coordinate to that point. Now conversely, if you had things like sphere targets, you could register those in uh, Trimble Business Center or Trimble Real Works as well. So those are some of the the questions that come up quite often about the GeoSlam Go Anywhere system. Uh, thank you for listening to this tech talk. And if you have any questions, you can contact me, Nathan Stevenson, at Nathan S at FrontierPrecision.com. Thank you very much.